Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to take a look at how the Brexit media are spinning things with an article in the ever jingoistic Daily Express as they say the government is going to scrap the protocol as early as next week. Obviously I cannot imagine this being remotely true and I suppose they'll have to come up with some reason why not next week. Uh, you know, why didn't they do it after all? Even though they also, the EU didn't also give in to our ridiculous demands for unicorns. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, I mean, I didn't do a Brexit media story last Friday because of the elections, of course. But we're back on here. I talked about the uh, latest ramping up of rhetoric concerning the Northern Ireland Protocol a couple of days ago. And there were some developments. But then there was this little gem in the Daily Express, caught my eye yesterday. Headline, Brexit Live, nerves of steel, trust to slap EU with 72 hours deadline before scrapping deal. Now, this was yesterday, as I say. I mean, I thought to myself, well, Truss is meeting Sefcovich, which has now happened apparently. And in it was basically Truss going, oh, we're going to do this thing. And Sefcovich basically going, I really wouldn't do that if I were you. Um, so we'll just wait to see how it pans out next week, I suppose. But, but the headline suggested a final phase, didn't it? You know, we've seen the likes of the Express ramp up the rhetoric before, of course, reporting that some Brexit government minister or other is losing patience and any time now they're going to tear up the whole deal, just you wait. You know, this has been going on for a year. But this time the same paper has been saying the EU is close to collapse for years now. Any time now, it's there, it's cracking. Is it gone yet? No, but it's nearly there. It's funny how it just keeps getting bigger and stronger. But this headline suggests a definite and very short-term timetable. They're not just saying that Truss will scrap the protocol if the EU don't do this thing. But there's a fixed timetable. 72 hours, that's it now, we've had enough, that's it do this thing or 72 hours later we're scrapping it. And this was yesterday, so it's 48 hours now. So what, on Sunday? Truss is going to announce a unilateral scrapping of the protocol, is she? I don't think so. When I discussed this on Wednesday, I did say, I mean, you can't be sure, and you still can't be sure now, you can't be, ever be sure if the government are serious about this unilateral action at some point or if it's just political games to keep the ERG on side. But the thing is, between then and now, there have been some interesting reports regarding the EU, the USA and the Tory parliamentary party. So the EU, first of all, because this is the most straightforward, they have reiterated their threat to impose economic sanctions on Britain if we do not respect our international treaty with them. What's not clear is if they will just target key British exports or scrap the whole deal. Of course, they could do both. They could hit politically sensitive British goods in the first instance because they could do that immediately while they then begin the process of cancelling the entire trade and cooperation agreement, which will take some time. Then the United States. Obviously, whenever the British government have talked about unilaterally breaching our treaties, both the White House and Capitol Hill have responded very clearly. Cross-party support, this is not about Democrats, Democrats and Republicans, very clear that they would oppose such a move. Yes, yes, I know, the USA, who broke every treaty they ever signed with Indigenous Americans, but like I keep saying, people should not let their countries be defined by people who died years ago. But the US have never actually said what action they will take under these circumstances. They keep saying, we're dead against this, but it's always been a bit vague as to what they would do about it. But there has been a little bit of movement. A congressional group did ask the president to appoint a special envoy to Northern Ireland, and he's now done so. So basically, there's going to be a diplomatic uh, entry directly into Northern Ireland. As an aside, I always find it amusing, I was reading the letter, I always find it amusing when Americans refer to uh, the Prime Minister, like they'll say Prime Minister Johnson, or in this case, Secretary Truss, as if it's like a title that's part of their name. And I know that's what they do in America. It's like President Biden and Secretary, so on. And, and, you know, but it never fails to look really quaint to me. But anyway, the point is that the Americans have now appointed someone specifically to keep the government appraised, their own government, appraised of what's going on in Northern Ireland directly. 
Finally, Tory MPs themselves. A report suggests that a major rebellion would be waiting for Truss if she tries to legislate to scrap parts of the protocol. In fact, before I go on to that, it's worth bearing in mind that when the Express talks about scrapping the protocol 72 hours after, 72 hours after their article, it's got to be complete hogwash in multiple ways. Firstly, I don't think the government are really prepared for the consequences of doing this. Like, again, you can never be 100% sure because they're, they're, they're like mad dogs, but really cannot imagine that they are prepared. Secondly, can't just do it. As I was explaining to someone recently, the Northern Ireland Protocol is not just a fact of international law, it's in British law as well. If the government breach it, a British court could order the protocol reinstated. Just like when the DUP tried it. Edwin Poots of the DUP, a couple of months ago, he tried to order checks to be stopped. Northern Ireland Protocol checks to be stopped. The High Court in Belfast says, no, you... I mean, they were ignoring the order anyway. But the, the, the High Court confirmed, yeah, you carry on ignoring that order. You know, until a review had been carried out at least. The same would happen if the Westminster government tried to do the same thing. It's one thing to break international law, although the consequences for the entire country could be quite severe. But a determined government can ignore international courts. But they can't ignore domestic courts, although we have just seen legislation passed in Parliament that will make it easier for them to do so. But the bottom line is that the government need to legislate to change the protocol in British law if they want to stop British courts overruling them. That could, in theory, be done quickly if the government was determined, but they would need the support of both a majority of MPs as well as peers in the House of Lords. The latter seems very unlikely, but it would only take 40 or so Tory MPs to oppose the move and it could never even get to the Lords. And there are, according to reports, quite a few Tory MPs who back Brexit, but also insist that we honour our Brexit agreements. And some of them have been quite public about it. Now, there may be those who point to, there was an article, for example, in the Times, it's been you know, repeated elsewhere, that the Attorney General, Swela Braverman, who that she has said that the government can, can lawfully breach the protocol. If Boris Johnson puts this questionable advice into practice, I think I can fairly confidently suggest that a High Court judge will say otherwise. Braverman is basing her judgment on the fact that the Good Friday Agreement is more important than the protocol because it is older. Now, I'm not going to go into a legal lecture here because I'm not a legal expert, but I do know a couple of things. First, the legal advice was that the protocol does not interfere with the Good Friday Agreement. That was the basis on which it was sold to the public, agreed with the EU, written into both British and international law. So the entire basis of her argument is a complete nonsense. There isn't a conflict between the protocol and the Good Friday Agreement. There have already been court cases about this. Second, where there is an apparent contradiction between two laws in general terms, which can happen, you do not decide that the older one is supreme. In fact, if age comes into it at all, it's actually the more recent one that takes precedence. I've seen this come up in constitutional court cases where judges actually state that. Well, the more recent one is clearly going to have precedence. Because it's more recent, I could also point out that Braverman is not actually an expert in UK constitutional law either. She is a lawyer who practised in the United States. She's got no proven expertise in applying law in the UK in any field. Though it does make you wonder why she made this statement, which must have been at the behest of Boris Johnson, because she's basically Boris Johnson's legal gopher. Why say that breaking the protocol is legal and then have your foreign secretary say that she will do just that on Monday if the EU don't fold? It's going to make them look rather silly when they don't do it next week. And if they do do it next week, rather sillier. In the real world, for the government to actually scrap the protocol, they would need to be prepared for a trade war with the EU, which they cannot sustain. There seem to be some Tory MPs of the opinion that the EU wouldn't start one for fear of losing this show of unity against Russia. But this exposes their ignorance of what the protocol is for. The EU would not be making a political decision to trigger a trade war. They cannot legally, economically or politically afford to weaken the single market like this. The trade war would be automatic not decided on a whim by politicians. In addition, the government would also have to suffer potential consequences from the Americans as well, although we do not know what those would be, if anything. 
But if there's also a rebellion against this move within the Conservative Parliamentary Party, then the whole idea is a non-starter anyway. So this Express headline is going to look a little silly next week. I think they probably know it as well. It's another example of how the headline isn't actually backed up by the article. It's a little bit like the Daily Mail and Beergate, and they said last week, a Labour lied, it turns out Angela Rayner was at the same meeting as Starmer. Starmer. Then you read the article and it said that she wasn't after all. As if, you, oh, you can't be accused of lying in a headline by saying something inaccurate if the article gives a more factual account. You know, same thing here. The headline says one thing. It says, you've got 72 hours and then we're breaking the protocol. And then the article itself says, well, Monday, maybe, which is 96 hours really, but by saying Monday. Then it says, Truss is hoping to scrap the protocol. Which is not quite so definite as the headline suggested. What's actually likely to happen, I suspect, is next week, Truss will once again confirm that she's committed to a negotiated solution and that the EU seem to be receptive and they've obviously, you know, backed down, you know, in the face of her strong iron will and she'll give them a little bit more time to behave, you know. And then we'll go through the whole hideous cycle again in a month or two. But watch this space, I guess. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. Maybe even click the join button if you'd be interested in memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.